Um, LSD Maxi, are you here? You should be here. I really hope you're here. If not, I'm really sad. Um, Matt Crypto, let's go. Join in, man. Take the seat. You're the first one to announce, so you choose the seat. Um, Andy Leon. I'm here, I'm here. Hello, mister. Hi. Nice to see you again. And your crypto DJ. Let's go, man. Join. Sandro. Sandro Crypto. Beautiful. And I'm giving it to the moderator, Joy, please. Great. Follow. Let's Lead give a round of applause to all the panelists here. Thank you very much for making this happen. I know the traffic outside it, it sucks. <laughs> All right, um, so shall we start this panel right now? Um, how about we briefly give a short introduction of yourself and the project you're building and also like um, the backgrounds before or um, about your KOL career? Hi, I'm Andy, I'm from Singapore. Um, I'm a book author, but I run a regulated fund um, and I do a lot of uh, crazy investments. Yeah, so this is who I am. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Mateo, I'm from Mexico, and uh, I'm a KOL. I'm also uh, managing a fund, and uh, I'm building my own project now called Knights. Can you talk a little bit more about Knights? Uh, well, basically I'm building a Airbnb on-chain, where one token equals one night in a, in a, at a specific property. Uh, so you can trade the nights, or you can like burn them to book and actually visit the property. So that's what I'm working on now. We have a beta now working. We have a property in Mexico now, but we're looking to expand to uh, Thailand, Bali, du Dubai, like main hotspots. Hot Andy said come to Singapore. Maybe Singapore is a good choice. All right, I'll pass my mic to you. Good afternoon, my name is Shulti a DJ, so I'm half English, half French, living in Spain. I'm a DJ producer, been DJing and producing for a good while now. I speak too much, unfortunately, so I'm a space host. I do AMAs all the time. I speak uh, for many, many projects. And I'm a voice of some more. And I carry around mix from time to time. Hey guys, my name is Sandro. Um, unfortunately, I'm a KOL, so after the last panel, it's hard to uh, introduce yourself as, uh, as a KOL, to be honest. Uh, I'm not posting pictures of myself on Twitter. I'm creating content that educate people. And um, yeah, we're building Eastflow. It's a node as a service um, provider, and we're doing a lot of stuff, working with a lot of projects, uh, also in this room. And yeah, happy to be here. Great, great. Um, good to have you all here on the panel. So my first question goes to, because we know like in this uh, 2024, we have a lot of narratives going on, like AI, restaking, liquid staking. Uh, from the KOL perspective, which areas you think are um, the most exciting area? And you would love to put your money, for instance, your own money into those projects. Um, can you name a few and tell us a little bit about why you think that's important for 2022? Um, sorry, oh, oh, sorry, I'm dazing. You know, so um, I think from my end is um is, is a good mix. So from a from a regulated side, of course, we are investing in things that are slightly longer term. You no, know, but then of course I have my small small wallet that I used to gamble. Um, honestly, out of the projects that 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 I've invested in. Some of them are going to TG a lot later because maybe the project owners didn't have the boss to do it, you know. But but also at the same time, you know, I'm also doing very well with uh, things that has a good community base, right? So more recently, you know, into coins that are more meme coins like, you know. So so sometimes it's a very sad thing, you know. Whenever I post really good content, you know, my comments and things like that, maybe it's from Hacker Noon or whether it's from Coin Telegraph. Oh man, five people come and like me, you know. But then if I post those really shitty stuff, you know, a lot of the meme comes, right? Then it gives me that narrative that, okay, you know, that narrative is going to be really hot, you know. So I started to put a lot more effort into that uh, ever since, you know, right from the really good old days from uh, Shiba Inu all the way now to Nero. Things are good, you know. So I hope these uh, good vibes will just continue, you know. So that, that's my, my, my quick two cents worth. 
Yeah, I would agree. Like, uh, definitely, meme coins are like uh, really hot, and they're like a uh, very special kind of project where the community gathers around uh, more than technology, around like uh, a vibe, and that makes it like very different. Uh, definitely, I think uh, with the entrance of like uh, BlackRock and all these big players, I think like real world assets and uh, DeFi are still is still important. I think DeFi will come back actually because I think uh, they're very they actually have proven themselves. Like uh, there's like old boring projects like Aave or Uniswap, but they're established and they're very solid and actually have a functioning project that actually makes a cash flow so i think that will be really interesting for more serious uh investors when they come in that totally makes sense i um, just wanted to know like more about DeFi. this is also for liquid staking who's liquid staking maxi oh no one is looking <coughs> maxi okay cool so it's a it's a it's a previous DeFi. <laughs> it's a DeFi in 2021. That's more fun uh, for sure. Um, yeah, I wanted to hear about like which areas you guys like the most. Um, yeah, I'm more into utility coins, so I'm not a DeGen with the meme coins. So <laughs> I totally understand the engagement part. It's sometimes very hard when you pause and you get like I don't know five likes. But uh, I'm more focused on the deep in space, to be honest, AI, and uh, also gaming. I'm one of the last persons in Web3 believe in gaming studios and stuff. And, uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, I think there are many, many great um, business models coming on chain now that already generate revenue and stuff. So this gets me very excited. And um, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Unfortunately, I'm all the opposite of my friends here. I'm <laughs> completely in the trenches, literally a full DJM, so I'm really into new coins. I like the honesty about they bring that they've got no utility at all, so it's absolute gambling. So this project's at high behind that we're going to have a utility, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Something comes, some things don't. So there's the hype between is it actually, are the team actually delivering and working behind what they're actually going to say? Where in new coins, it's just a community, it's all based on community base. So that I agree that brings, in my opinion, more audience at least. It's a very guy hard community because they just believe in one thing and all things go. I agree on gaming. Uh, many people game, play video games. I believe that's gonna be very, very big. Look at GTA 6, they're gonna supposed to integrate some stuff in there, if it ever comes, because the time they're gonna take to actually release the game, but still. So yeah. Many meme coins and gaming, and a little bit of the assets, but I'm not too deep into that. Let, let's dive into meme coin for a bit, because we know Pump Fun actually made a lot of revenue um, through, uh, once it's like launched, and then it just changed the way of like people or community launch tokens. Maybe previously it was NFT, right? But like NFT, we only have. Um, 10k projects, so it's not that liquid, but like for, for tokens now, I mean, it actually can involve all of the community members to purchase tokens, and then the token has much more liquidity, which means that we can put a lot of like leverage on top of it, and, and you know, there are a lot of like interesting play, playbook around that. So, I wanted to know, like, do you think Pump, Pump Da Fun uh, changed the way of uh, asset launching, and also? Do you think that will be the ultimate goal of what the community tokens would be like? I think it made it easier for people to actually create a token because beforehand you might need to know code, you might need to know, understand more stuff to how to actually launch a token. These days, literally $2, I think it costs. Go and pop that fan, literally put a name, put a Twitter, if, if you can't be actually involved these days. And off you go, that's why there's like hundred and something thousand projects every day by launching. I do believe it changed the game. It makes it extreme, like a lot faster, unfortunately. Um, I hear a lot of like, love-hate because people believe that they just removed a lot of the actual liquidity with the hundred million revenue I believe they made not long ago. Um, the system though, I believe is just it makes it so, so fast to actually get a project and it makes it harder for myself or us DJs to actually find a good project between them because after five, 10 minutes, I think it's 90% of projects are dead. 
if that. So yeah, they definitely changed the system. Tokens used to last a lot longer. Now I celebrate the token survives a week, to be completely honest, when if it was like a month or two, you know, that was like, congratulations kind of thing. So yeah, I definitely believe change the game for sure. Yeah, questions goes back to Andy, who is DJing in this tokens. Um, like, how do you think about how how do you think about the those like very short term uh, meme coins? Are you still gonna invest in them? Um, and what's your perspective on that? And do you think it's necessary to make it sustainable? Long, long question. I, 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 I think I think this um we, we have to be very realistic, right? You know, sometimes it lasts longer, sometimes it lasts shorter, right? But but many times it's about how fast you're gonna run. Right, so so a lot of this narrative that you see are not very long term, right? If you look at projects, right, some of them they have like one, you know, some some protocol and so forth. They're one million followers, right, and then they only have like two likes, right. So you know that there's no community, right. So the same kind of logic goes to those, you know, those those tokens, the meme tokens. It's the same. It's about how many real active users are really playing, right? So when, when I started in some of these, these projects, a lot of these uh, devs, they would text me, say, hey, bro, I'm, uh, I'm coming, you know? Trust me, bro, you know? I was like, okay, yeah, that's okay, I put in 20 grand, right? But, but the thing is, when, when, when you start to do this very often, sometimes there's a, there's, there's a lot of losses, you know? So you need to do some nice, Unicorn uh, meme in order for you to survive through the next few months, right? <coughs> so for me, if I put in more, I think and I'm very confident that some of it will turn out to be more profitable, right? Um, I think that narrative will continue, you know, whether it's sustainable or not, it depends on the community, right? And, and please, you know, if there's any meme coin guys out there, Please don't come and tell me that I have a utility now. Sorry. <laughs> don't tell me that I have a utility, you know. Don't build, don't build things that is going to be there just for the sake of being there, right? You need community before you could talk about utility. You know, I had this conversation with some of the guys, you know, they kept saying that, oh, you know, you have the real world asset. Wow. Well, rap boom, rap boom. <laughs> so real world assets and so forth. But, but, but also at the same time, if you don't have a community, all this real world asset, or this utility, or even this staking is not gonna work. Because you put in real, for example, BNB, right, real money, right? That kind of, you know? And, and, then, and then you get, and then you stake and get more shit coin that is going down. So, so it doesn't work. So I still felt that community is gonna be the most important thing, you know? And the kind of engagement level on Twitter say, says it all, you know? If it's robots, it's so easy to spot them. Right, the account handler would be handsome, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, right? So they don't even have the, the effort to change all these things. You know, so I still felt that um, spot those projects with good um, community, you might do well in the next, you know, next, next, next coin, I don't know, you know. Yeah, I think, uh, well, my approach to meme coins has been like uh, try to focus on like the what I think are like the big, most popular players, and I even like put bets in different chains that are maybe not so popular now, but they have the opportunity in the bull market to pop. And I know that if that chain goes up, the meme coin, like the most popular one, will also go up. So it, it's always a bet. There's like this approach to short-term meme coins where Elon Musk said uh, some word and then they will create a meme coin and that will last like two days. But my approach is to go into the longer term bets that I think will be more sustainable with like a more strong community and it won't disappear in just one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Five days is better. Um, yeah, if we talk about meme coins, we're gonna talk uh, talk about it for at least like two days, um, different kind of topics. I wanted to like, since we're talking about strategy, so I wanted to uh, know more about like from your perspective, how do you think about the projects and uh, as a KOL, like what, what do you think are the most important thing, uh, just like Andy said, to build the community 
and do they what's the like current status of those projects do any of the projects that you know really focus on community and um, in which areas they, they focus the most that's a good question um, I think it depends also on the projects and who they want to attract so when you clearly just a mean coin or whatever like I think the KOS were long in the business they can identify it very quick so what's behind the project and um, I think the KOL strategy stuff changed a lot the last months because uh, a lot of the KOLs were able to um, show their value on chain. So maybe I'm not uh, sure if you're aware of nodes and node sales. So there was like Ether, Carve, so on, uh, revolving games. Many good uh, projects out there decided to go with nodes. And usually what they do is like they go to KOLs and ask, hey, do you want to work with us? We have these rep codes. So every sale uh, KOL uh, brought to the project is tracked on chain, right? So I just throw some numbers so we have a bit of context. Uh, for Ether, for example, my community is in, uh, in the Dach region, so all my content is in German. And my community bought Ether nodes for 1.3 million. So I was right behind CD5. Like, and everyone was, okay, what is this code Sandro? What is Sandro? Who's Sandro, right? So now when the project reached out to me, like, hey, should we work together? And they are offering me to invest in their KOL round. I'm like, okay, but why should I do that, right? You have team token, you have advisory token, you have marketing token, maybe be a bit more creative, right? If you're reaching out to KOLs who, I don't know, post the selfies and promote uh, Sundog all day. I mean, I love Sundog, but uh, no offense, but you know, it's like, you can't put all the KOLs in the same corner, and, like reach out with a, a basic uh, copy paste message right so I think projects really need to be creative right now with their approach and um, really focus on I mean at least it's my opinion when you're a quality project just look on chain what happened uh, happens in the la happened in the last months and find a way to attract the KOLs who can bring you value right a, a, a selfie phone that don't bring you value to your project even like impressions from the wrong people don't bring you value to your project. So when we talk about engagement and all this meme coins, I really hate meme coins, by the way. This, I think it's ruined the whole space, and I'm, I'm, I can't wait till there are some laws, uh, laws and regulation stuff, because this is just casino gambling, and everyone is like, oh, let's go, let's go, and everyone just wants to dump on the new money, right? So this is not why I uh, uh, got into this space, right? So um, maybe focus more on the good KOLs, look at what are they promoting, um, look at uh, past corporations, uh, uh, the partnerships that they have, and um, try to attract the value they can bring and uh, be a bit more creative than just a KOL round. That was a very long and interesting answer for sure. <coughs> Unfortunately, I disagree that I believe meme coins are here to stay, and I hope they do stay. Sorry. They <laughs> But yeah, as for projects, I believe in these last months, I really noticed that they've been expanding. It used to be like just X, or Twitter, or you know, whatever you want to call it, and Telegram. Now I see so much on the short form via TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, like Noob, for example. Uh, no, I don't know how you pronounce that, Noob, Nub. They're really, really, really big on Instagram. And we brought a lot of the normies, as we call them, into like, okay, what's this, you know, what's this funny picture kind of thing, like Ponke or Brett, for example, that's in football stadiums and stuff. So it's integrating within the masses and something that they could understand. So they can come and be like, okay, why do I buy this? Okay, I love the community. It's a funny dog. Okay, it's got no utility and it's not really that it's pure gambling, I totally understand. And I agree, by the way. Um, but yeah, it's a different approach that makes it extremely easy because at the end of the day, it's friction between projects and customer or end goal and customer. So that short form videos and integration with stuff that people use in their day to day makes it a lot easier to actually bring new people or people out in the scene and be like, okay, like, these guys know what they're doing. They have a huge following because they know how to attack and play the game via social media. So that's my point of view. That totally makes sense. But I totally agree with the you need to use kind of like um, 
you know, attractive ways to to show to KOLs and then they, they, they would love to promote the contents for your project. Um, also, I know like Andy had a book before. Do you think the book helped you to have more followers or engagement on that? Are you going to have your second book? <laughs> so, so, that's, uh, so I have two books, uh, another one is coming up. Um, no, no, the, the, the next book is about web four, but it's kind of uh, I, I, idealistic. No, but so, so coming back to book, I think it's all about content, right? So, so every one of us are creating content, you know, whether it's a picture of myself, you know, or, 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 or whether it's a picture of a, of a nice chart, you know, we are trying to create, create content. I think book perspective is, is always good. But if you look at the, the market, you know, whether you're a KOL or you're an investor or whatever you want to call yourself, like influencer, I, I, I think we, we just need to be very careful on, on what kind of content that we are, we are bringing out, right? And in order for you to be a successful KOL, it's not just about writing a book or writing some articles. It's, it's, not, it's not going to work. The, the main thing that is going to make a difference is whether you are a KOL that can help retail investors make money, or you cannot help them make money, or you try to rap with them, right? Or maybe in a very straightforward perspective, is, is it is richer, more well-to-do KOL, and the poorer KOLs. You know, that, that's, it, that, that's my opinion, because it's not about the content of the book that, 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 that I, have write, I have written. It's more about how you help your community, right? If you are able to grow with your community, people will like you, right? If you are not able to grow with the community and you kept shilling really bad coins, then you please make sure that you have a fake profile picture. <laughs> yeah, because all these things are going to haunt you back. Right. But of course, I just want to say these three taxes. Uh, I do invest in AI, I do invest in gaming, I do a lot of uh, sponsorship in uh, eSports and so forth. But, but from, a, from, a, from a more natural progression, or maybe what I see in the market right now, is still the, you know, the meme coin and the DGEN guys, not me, <laughs> that, 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 that's going to do well. You know? So, so I, I hope that everything will continue. I just wanted to add, like, uh, with the utility coins, like, many of them are just disguised as utility coins, but at the end they are meme coins, until they find that real utility that will actually capture value, because they will just, like, make up, like, some governance or whatever that anyone can do. This, this is true. Um, this is actually the reality. And then back in Brussels, we actually had a debate with um, some other ventures as well about like meme tokens and VC tokens. And I, from my perspective, it's like no matter it's exchanges or like the current market sentiment, the high FDB projects are not very popular right now, and it's not uh, you know cater our taste from a VC perspective or from a KOL perspective. So one last question uh, to you all: uh, What do you think are the most important thing for uh, the KOLs uh, to grow in a way in different areas? Like, because I think both of you have different backgrounds and target different like audiences. Uh, what do you think are the most important thing uh, to do? Maybe one more question: And uh, what do you think will be the ultimate goal of this market for KOL? Well, that would be like what a few KOLs dominate the market, and then the rest of it is just like showing, you know, in a way. Or do you think that there are like it's a very competitive landscape with different areas has any different KOLs? Uh, I think it's a competitive space. There's space for like regions, languages, and all kind of stuff. Like all the things I do is in Spanish, for example. So. It's like a special niche, and the projects uh, have been putting more attention to like other languages than English in the last three, four years, but before that, they were not doing it. And also, of course, in the bull market, we will see like uh, non-crypto content creators start talking about crypto, but maybe they don't have as large conver conversion, you know, because their audience is just uh, focused on entertainment or like their dances, and they're not, uh, they don't have the attention or the interest to talk about finances or 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 the, or the com more complex stuff that will require more energy for them. And uh, what was your first question uh, about uh, the, 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 the market? Uh, well, the, the end goal for the market, I think, 
uh, well, about content, like to grow the audience. Uh, for example, I try to make a little bit of everything. Like uh, my main are like YouTube and Twitter. And I try to do like uh, from interviews to like uh, a news updates to like step-by-step -step tutorials and also like uh, crypto blogs. Like I have videos here from like 2019 uh, buying uh, Bitcoin in like some ATMs that they used to have here in Singapore. And I like to switch it up and uh, also try to maybe call up with like non-crypto more popular people that will maybe send you a little bit of audience that will help you slowly grow. And of course, I think to grow, you have to have success stories, right? Because people will tell, oh, this guy said about this token and th that token went up. So more people will start following you and that creates like a snowball effect. <laughs> so, so um, I, I, I still think of, um, you know, um, you know the word, I think the previous panel was talking about whether it's KOL or, or influencer and all these things. I, I, I felt that now this is really a dirty word, you know, uh, and say that, oh yeah, KOL. KOL is a key opinion leader, you know, but I, I think it's not, you know, there's a very thin line between influencer and KOLs, right? If you produce a shit content, you can be an influencer. Right, but if you if you produce really quality stuff and you know people really want to hear about you, probably you are KOL. Yeah. You know, but it's not about shitting a project. You know, it's not about um, just just talking to the audience. You know, it's about how strong your voice is. You know, if you post something, is uh, is CZ going to reply to you, for example, right? Or if you post something, so and so big shot is going to reply to you. Maybe that would give you the status of a key opinion leader. Right, but if you post something and, and 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 all the dogs and cats just come after you, then you're probably an influencer, right? So so I think that team line is you have to really define this very properly, and that that is going to help the market because good influencers one post they could be a tens of thousand, you know, KOLs are more poor, you know, just like me, you know, I'm poor, you know. Because because I, I got a lot of messages asking about oh can you do a post and I'll give you twenty grand, you know, but then I felt that you know I'm not I'm not there to do that job, you know, and then that perhaps that's the reason why I have less uh, you know, less followers, you know, than, than than many many others was was here, right? So I still think that we should do the right kind of content for the right kind of purpose, you know, and it's not just about money. Right, if you want money, you could always rob the bank, right? So why join cryptocurrency, right? We, we, we all believe that you know, things are decentralized and things can work a lot better in a more decentralized manner. That's the reason we are here, right? That's the reason why you know, our friends is talking about utility, RWA and so forth. But before we reach that stage, you know, I still felt that community is really strong. We need to do more, right? So I hope everyone will share nice content. Yeah, I don't mind the pictures of yourself. <laughs> Yeah, here. I just wanted to say that. Sorry, um, um, sorry. No, what I wanted to say is the fact, yeah, like every market, it's extremely competitive. But within the digital space, there's a mouth to mouth at the end of the day. So if someone, like you were saying, she also said, talks about something, and it could go well at the end of the day, people will say, oh, yeah, you know, this guy said something, and it went up. It'll be a mouth-to-mouth a mouth within the digital space. And at the end of the day, the market will decide. Like, if someone's really bad, the, the people in, in the space will be like, yo, don't even f look at this guy, talk to this guy, don't think, just block him because he's, excuse my friend, he's shit. But, uh, but yeah, and after, you know, if, if it's, it could be the complete opposite as well. I completely agree. And as for the KO aspects, at the end of the day, we're social human beings. So if you want to try to be the most authentic possible way of you. When people see you in real life or talk to you via whatever it could be, and they see that you're the same guy, they're like, oh, okay, he's actually authentic. He's not a he's not a persona online, and after real life, he's completely different, for example. And make it something that can resonate to yourself. So when they see you, for example, you know, they say, oh, you know, he must like writing because he has two books, for example. 
and like I make music, so I want to make it in a more musical aspect, or like DJing, uh, and not DJing as like in trenches as like DJ's music, for example. So yeah, that's my opinion about the KOLs within the space for the future. I forgot the question to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Freestyle, like, what would you want to talk to the audiences, and hey, how do you think about the KOL industry in general? Okay, I really like the to um, to not put everything like uh, um, everyone at the moment is a KOL, right? But you're clearly just an influencer. So, I, I mean, you could identify them with getting uh, deeper into the project, uh, talking about tokenomics, emissions, and stuff, and they will clearly black out at some point, right? So maybe when you want to grow at the, uh, as a KOL, start to educate more about Bitcoin, Ethereum, a long-term vision, right? And not only this uh, meme coin pump we have right now, like, I mean, even, uh, I don't want to be the boomer, but this like the truth, like, there are so many people who get into crypto because of meme coins, they put way too much money in a, in a random cat, whatever, they lose so much and then, they come to like content creators, KOLs, whatever, and they're, they're like, hey, can you help me or whatever. So I think when you want to grow as a KOL, start to educate and not only to share all these uh, projects. Yeah. Great, wonderful. All right, I think time is up. Um, thanks everyone for sharing your insights here at this panel. Really love to meet you. And for those of you who didn't follow all these accounts, um, you know, pull out your Twitter and then follow them on different platforms. Thank you very much for joining us this panel. Thank you. Oh, um, let's take a picture of this. Yeah, do you give us pick the phrase that you like? We have different Oh, pictures. I take this one. <laughs> <laughs> Make out quite great again. No, I have, don't mind you. Huh? I'm pretty rich. Oh, that's right. Oh, yes. Yeah. I saw you just now, but I didn't know say hi. Sandro, it's okay. Yeah, we'll <laughs> You're on point with the with the stuff, right? How can you be a key opinion leader of meme points? What are you? What's your opinion? What are you leading? Guys, <laughs> one, two, three. One step closer, please. There's a light. Yeah. It's a star. No, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. Guys, <laughs> but we're holding the sign. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Alright. Can you guys hold on for one more picture, sorry?